Alright guys, so today I'm going to be showing this really cool uh, self-working card trick. Before I do that, I want to give a shout out to Reese Muhammad for this deck. Uh, make sure you guys follow him on Twitter. I'm going to leave the link down in the description box. And anyways guys, here is the actual trick. Alright guys, so to start this one off, all you have to do is let's say we shuffle up the deck real quick. And then from here, what you're going to do is have the spectator cut the deck up into three different piles like this. And then you're going to have them choose a pile. Look at the bottom card, that's going to be theirs. And then they're going to mix up the other piles or just switch them up, uh, the ones they didn't choose. So let's say we do that. Let's say we have a spectator come over and they're going to cut the deck up into three different piles. And then at this point, I'm going to look away so that way they can choose a card and then I'll come back. So. Alright, so at this point, let's say okay, we have the spectator, you guys saw the card already. And then what I'm going to do is let's say I square up the other two piles just like this. We're going to put them over here and then I'm going to mix up the deck as well. So let's say I mix up the cards and just from that I should be able to tell that the card the spectator chose was the 10 of diamonds. So this is a trick guys and if you follow how to do it, don't forget to stick on for the tutorial. So the reason I feel like this is kind of one of the better self-working tricks is because you can use a borrow deck and there's no setup. So you can, you can have the spectator shuffle up the deck any way they want and the trick will still work so um, the major thing here is you just need to know the bottom card in this case it's going to be the eight of hearts if the spectator shuffle it up but if you want to you can put a more uh, memorable card down there so let's say we have the ace of diamonds this way you guys can't forget it so you can go up the spectator you can shuffle it up keeping that key card on the bottom you still know it is the ace of diamonds. So at this point, um, you're going to have the spectator split the deck up into three separate parts. So you show them how to do it. This way they don't get confused and this way the end of the trick doesn't kind of get screwed up. So you know that left to right from your perspective, you're going to have the key card at the bottom. So from here you tell them to pick any pile they want and flip it over and whatever card is on the bottom, that is going to be their card. And then the other packets that they didn't choose, you're going to make sure you tell them to just flip them so that way uh, it makes it more difficult for you to actually find out the card they picked. So you put the cards back together, you let them separate it themselves, and they kind of just spread the packets out like this. And at this point you're going to look away, so you're not seeing them doing this, so they're going to pick um, any packet. I'm going to kind of try to show you guys how to deal uh, with what happens with each um, scenario. So let's say they pick the first, first packet here, and like I said, you're not watching them. They pick it up, they show themselves, their card is going to be the Ace of Diamonds. They then switch these other two packets around, and then you come back, and now from here, you don't know which packet they chose. So at this point, the first step is to immediately take the left packet here and put it on the middle, just like that, with no breaks. And now what you do is you pick it up, and as an excuse to see the bottom card, you say, right, I'm going to square it up, and you just casually flash it so you can see this card. And now at this point, you know if the middle packet is right here and you see this is not the key card their their selection must either be the card you're holding in your hand or the key card itself so you know you're remembering the eight of clubs you put that on the third packet and you say okay I'm just gonna mix up the deck real quick and when you go to mix it up you can do a riffle shuffle and that's gonna allow you to peek at the bottom card here so you know that this isn't the key card so if the middle card and the last card so if the second packet and the third packet don't contain the key card then you know the card that they selected was indeed the key card. So at this point, I know the card was the Ace of Diamonds. So I'll show you guys now what happens if they're going to use or pick the second packet. All right, so at this point, um, you still have the Ace of Diamonds as the key card in the left, and you have two random cards at the bottom. So let's say they were to pick the middle packet here. They're going to pick it up, show it to themselves. In this case, their card is going to be the Ace. Actually, let's make that the Eight of Spades. So it's a little bit easier to differentiate the cards. So let's say we have the eight of spades is going to be their selection. You're not looking, they flip the packets, and the first thing you always do is immediately put the left packet on the middle. You say, okay, I'm gonna square it up, you flip it over, and at this point, like I said before, it's exactly like the last uh, scenario. You either know this card is going to be their selection, or you know that the key card is gonna be the selection. So from here, you're remembering the eight of spades, you put that directly on top of the last packet and you say you're going to shuffle the deck. And now you see we have the key card here. So now we know their selection is not the key card, it was the card right before it, so it's the eight of spades. 
So from here, you already know the card is the Eight of Spades. You shuffle it up, and that's kind of the end of the trick, and you tell them it's the Eight of Spades. And I'm going to show you guys how to do it with the third packet. All right, so again, we have the key card here, okay, in the left packets. And now let's say the spectator is going to choose the packet, the third one, to the right. They're going to pick it up. They see their card is the Jack of Spades. You switch the other two. You immediately go to put the left packet on the middle. You say, all right, I'm going to go ahead and square this up real quick. And now that you see that the key card is in the middle, you immediately know that the next card is going to be there. So you see the key card. You put it on top of the packet, and all you have to do is find out what card is on the bottom, and you know the Jack of Spades uh, was their selection. So another tip real quick for you guys. Let's say we take the key card again. I'm going to go ahead and take the, uh, the Ace of Diamonds here. We'll put that on the bottom. We're going to redo the whole entire scenario. And uh, a good trick here is let's say they were to pick the middle pile. You flip it around like that. You do the thing where you put the left packet in the middle. When you look at the bottom here, when you flip these over and you can get a glimpse of this card and get a glimpse of the last card, you can see that whatever card, if you have the key card face up in the scenario, so if the key card is on the bottom of one of these packets, you always know that the other card is going to be their selection. So if the if you can visibly see the key card in the trick, then you know whatever card isn't the key card that's on the bottom of a packet is going to be the selection. So I uh, hope this helps you guys out. I hope you guys like the video. And as always, thanks for watching.